The following end. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Basil Chapman, Tiger Technician Hour, and uh, this is going to be a very important moment as we are speaking because um, the Dow is down 250 at 26,254. It hit the 50 period exponential moving average support this morning. Ter uh, just last night, the action was just horrible. It was down actually in the futures, down 600 at one point. Um, this is going to be something that we need to monitor now because all the ingredients, regardless of what happened over the weekend, last week I was talking about it on my show, that all the ingredients that I was looking at for some kind of a, a sharp pullback, and one of the reasons why we were short uh, 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 in terms of the shorter term, I have to go one step at a time here because that weekly chart was still really strong. But I attempted, and for subscribers, we still got some really nice long positions. They're actually holding very well. One is just taking off today. Uh, days young, who knows what can happen, but it just accelerated to almost a leg D in the daily chart. That's what we wanted to see. But that's not the issue. The issue is those are individual stocks. The actual sectors that we're looking at, if you look very carefully, you'll find that there's some underlying strength in a couple of key sectors. More importantly, if you look at the Dow, look at the daily chart. The MACD was good, but not as good as it should be when it made that peak D. On the, in the, on, let me just talk about this because I always talk about it, but I, I know a lot of people aren't used to my terminology. Core patterns in the Chapman Wave methodology try to identify the most lowest uh, obvious low bar, merely start counting each successively higher peak, alphabetize them on the way up, they go to G. Uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down. On the, on the upside, we go from a buy signal to a buy mode, and you want to see four higher peaks. Peak A, then a higher peak B, then a higher peak C, and then peak D, the fourth highest peak. That's where other things can happen. They don't have to, but that's where you lift your foot off the accelerator just a moment, and you hover over the brake to say, all right, we're going through or whatever the intersection is. Everything's got a green light. We're set. Okay. The patterns I look for are either the cup, where you rally from a particular point, you arch over, you come back and test it. If you break it, that's one thing. If you go, if you bounce off it, that's another. Or you go in a cup formation from a high, you pull back and you test that high. If you break above it, that's one thing. If you don't, that's another. All right? Just three patterns in, the, in all waveforms, straight up, straight down. Arch or cup. The arch could be a V-shaped pattern. I'm sorry, an inverted V-shaped pattern, and the cup could be a V, but it's the same principle, going from one point up and then back again. However, within that context, you can get the H pattern where you break, you come down, straight line, then you arch over, test, and you break it or hold it. So that's the lowercase H pattern, or you get the upside down or inverted Y, which means you're going to test the left side high. Really simple. That's all we're looking at. Of course, it sounds simple in real life. It's, it's just not always easy to do. Hey, here we go. What are we looking for? There's the arch formation. There's the Chapman Wave inside wedge. There's your left side, right side price time match. We got to the 26,062 level in one, in two days, two days early, taking out the Chapman Wave inside wedge support target line. We went under it. We went to 26,033. That's not a good sign because you're making lower highs and lower lows. Simple. I'm just trying to keep it simple. The MACD, the moving average convergence divergence, crossed sharply negative. That's not a good sign. And the stochastic is way down at 48%. Not a good sign. I'm waiting until it probably goes into the 20% area. That's where we start to expect some kind of a bigger bounce. That's my thinking. That doesn't have to happen. Resistance is at the 26,000. Uh, 320 level right now on a short-term basis. High today was 26,335. We'll see what happens for the rest of the day. The weekly chart, a peak, a peak C was formed last week because we did not make a new high above 26,695 all week. 
However, it's 26,951, the high of October, the all-time high that is the target for us over a period of the summer, all right? But in the meantime, we've gone under the nine-period moving average in the weekly chart. We haven't tested the 14 period of 25,980, but now we're above the nine. That's good. The magnet is only turning down, and the stochastic's way up at 93%, but it's turning down on balance volumes pulling back, and so is relative strength, but still pretty good at about 57%. Hey, so far, this is just the first decent pullback that we've had in a little while, and that's the way we have to look at it. However, if you go to, I'm going to skip the monthly chart just for the moment, because the monthly chart, I'm talking about a month, we've only just barely begun the new month. So let's just say excellent action so far. S&P, let's do that very quickly, get it down right now. What we're looking at is the S&P has made lower lows and lower highs. 29.49.52 was the all-time high. It made the all-time high. The QQQ is all-time high. XLK, tech, tech sector, and the S&P, all-time high. Hack, all-time high. These are very important indexes and the sectors. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, we haven't even made a peak C. We have the, all of this week not to go above 2949.52 to confirm we've made a peak C in the weekly chart. The MACD is strong, stochastics even higher than the Dow. It's at 97.10. That is really good action. And that's the reason why I didn't want to overdo the, the short side. I wanted to be very selective. That's why I didn't want to get rid of our, our long positions unless they were stopped out because so far they've done really well. I, it's a sector. I had a webinar a month ago, and I said, these are the sectors that we want. We're going to start buying them. People who got my um, newsletter, who are part of that uh, webinar, who got it for free, I hope you've done very well because we've had some real nice trades. We've also had made mistakes, but the, the long side has done much better than the short side. Okay, now what we're looking at is um, within that context, let's go to the QQQ and just say, uh, All-time high, 191.32, low lows, lower highs, still a nice tight consolidation. If the Qs are able to get to 191, I don't know how it's going to do that, but let's just say the Qs can go to 191 by Wednesday, I would say that's really good action. My thinking is they're going to make slightly lower lows, slightly high, lower highs, and we will make a peak C this week without a new high over 191.32. The MACD's week, the Stochastic's week, um, it's underneath, it's right on, in fact, the 14-period moving average. I, I'm suggesting to you be a little careful in the QQQ Invesco Trust Series, the NDX 100 trading vehicle. The IWM, lovely action. Look at this. Even though it's pulled back a little from the intraday high, it's still in leg C. It'll be a peak C if there's no new high uh, uh, from Friday's recovery high of 160.8. 64. This is nice action. And I would suggest to you that keep your eye on the IWM because um, if it holds better, fund managers are going to have something to buy. The small caps will be favorable. You need a little time just to see if it's going to hold these highs because the MACD is good. Stochastic is still only at 70%, and the weekly chart is very strong, um, holding very nicely. Now let's go to, so support is absolutely key at 156, it's at 159.95. I'm going to go, as we go to the break, we're going to go to the gold. Gold is uh, only up 0.7. You would think with all this conflagration going on with the tariffs, etc., over the weekend, hey, you would expect gold to be up at least uh, 8 or $9. It's only up 0.6. Something's wrong with this picture. I'll be right back. Mazda Chapman, Dow's up minus 230, S&P's minus 28. Be right back. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. All right, folks, so what we're looking at here is that gold has actually held very well because the low of 1249s, uh, this is a continuous contract, I better check that was it, yes, uh, 1249 round right about the 17th or so of uh, December, yeah, uh, we went all the way to 13, in the 1340s. I think it was sort of 1345. Let me just double check. What does that say? Yep, 1349.8. And then pull back. Very. That was a, in the Chapman Wave methodology. There was a peak E. That was a, the 18th, was it? 20th. 20th of February. And then we come down a very bumpity bump arch formation. Remember the uh, lowercase h? There is the one, two, three. Now we're making it almost like a, a lowercase m formation. But we haven't gone even close to the 1249 area. The low was 1265, 1267, uh, back on the 2nd of May. So, so far, gold has actually held quite nicely, but it's really not showing any leadership role. If you look at silver, done the same thing. It's held really well. Actually, it's, it's even better because it hasn't even come close to the low that was made back in December. No, it was November the 11th. When it went to 14.29, that was the low, and the, the this is the silver continuous contract. And so far, the low has been 14.57. So so far, it's just been a very, it's been nothing. It's just been like a, I'm taking my time. I'm just going sideways, slightly down, slightly lower highs and lower lows, but nothing serious. No big smash to the downside. I think that's very important to keep in mind because it says that gold and silver are not out of play. They're just not quite in play. I like that. that that's the concept I have because if you look at this, the dollar has been doing the exact opposite, beautiful cup formations, and each one has gone to a slightly higher high. It's just made a series of stair-step moves, basically higher lows, higher highs, with it's almost like three steps forward and pretty close to two steps or even more back. I mean, look at this. You go off the 95.03 low on January the 10th, you go all the way to 96.68, and then what do you do? You scare the bajillies out of anybody by going to 95.16. Well, fortunately, we've been long since April of last year, so that doesn't bother us. But the fact is, it went right to the 200, look at the orange line, the 200 period exponential moving average. And, right, and what's very nice about this, look, I wish I had a tool that I could just do this in, in simple terms. Look at this move right here. You see from there, from the 200 period moving average up to that high, 
if I use this, let me just make this nice and thick. Let's make it style, make it single, make it fat, nice and chub chubs. There you go, chubs. And now let's make it some, what kind of color should I make it? Make it blue. That seems to share. Look at the blue. Now look at this line from the 200 period movie. Remember, I, I've talked about this for years and years and years. I've said it's an incredible thing when you look at channels, especially if you look at something like the TNX, the 10 year treasury bond yield, and you look at it over 31 years and you see that it's been in the same down channel. That is a trend line going down and, and then one below it going down in the same degree. And yet it never breaks out up or down. It did once in December. That was the first time it didn't in the TYX, which is a 30 year, but it did just break out. I'm always fascinated by that, but what this will explain it. I, I, I need to be able, I wish I had the technical mathematical skills to be able to explain it better. I'm a visual person. Now look at this. When it went to the next high back on the 7th of March in 1971, it was just a tad bigger than the blue line. I'm going to explain something in a moment. And now what it's done, it looks fantastic, but look, it's just a little bit bigger, but it's the same, almost the same percentage to the upside to the 98.33 last hour of the 26th of April. Now, let me explain what I'm thinking. I, I wish I could do this in a mathematical way. I can't. I can do it very nicely in a visual way. Um, look, if I drew a channel line, well, let me see if I can actually do that here. I'll do this channel line, and I'll say the most important thing is to be able to identify the trend. So for me, the dollar is an uptrend, in a decisive uptrend, but most importantly, it's not that it's just in an uptrend. It is the fact that it is in an uptrend. There we go. Look, I'm going to make this red because if it takes that out, that's not good. And now I'm going to put another one over here and say, look at this, look at this uptrend from the, those highs right there, a bunch of those highs right there. What we've got is an emotional response that is diagrammed in price point. And that price point says, every time you get excited about the dollar, the moment you get a little too excited, shown by the arch of both the stochastic and the MACD, that's the technical side. The emotional side is bumping into resistance. And if it were to break to the upside, we could have a green line that says you've now turned this into some kind of a magnet, probably eventually turning into a support level. And below it, you could put a little bit of a support line, a Chapman wave, inside track, a cushion that was a repellent zone that's now going to become a, a, a support line. That's always been my thinking. I don't know how to put that into, uh, into um, I can put it into philosophical terms, but not the mathematical terms, other than to say, this is what I think happens. So when I say to you, it is incredible that you could have a, a, a chart that has an up channel at say resistance at 20, and then at 25, and then at 30, and then 35, and then 40, but you look at the base and the base is going 15 to 20 to 25, that is their arithmetic uh, result of what's happening. But to say that there's an uptrend and every time the emotion gets too high, you're going to bump into resistance because of X, 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 and Y, 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 and all these other things, I haven't got the tools to be able to put that into mathematical terms, but visually that's what I'm looking at. So that means that this pullback, which is so far one of the shallower pullbacks from hitting that line, if there is a rally in the dollar that even gets close to the 90, it's a 97.55, gets close to going to the 98s, that'll be the first time you've had a high level consolidation saying there's a, ch a chance you can break out. Uh, Peaky says it's like a cardiogram valve or a heartbeat. Yes, yes, yes. I've looked at heartbeats. Believe me, I've looked at heartbeats in great, great detail. Um, those EKGs, et cetera. But when you look at that, there's always a base. It doesn't, hmm, how can I explain it? I can't explain it right now. I'll, I'll try to, by Friday, technical Friday, maybe I can give you a little bit more on it. Let's not waste time. What I do want to do is to say, if you look at, um, if you look at the dollar, it's acting very nicely. If you look at the euro, EUR, USD, this is a euro dollar currency pair. 
It's at the bottom of the range. It's getting a couple of green candles. That's good to say. Maybe there's a cushion here in the 1.11111 ones out there. Um, but at this point, it's not a great looking chart at all in either the daily, the weekly, and the monthly. Now, if we look at the USD JPY, which took a bit of a hit last night, obviously, um, plop, it went underneath the support. It made a peak D, chap, and wave peak D daily, chap, and wave peak D weekly, and only a C in the monthly. This yen US dollar uh, yen currency pair trading down 0.27 at 110.8337 I would just say to you it's consolidating after eventually getting to what we wanted was a leg D in the weekly chart it's done that now it's consolidating with a 200 period moving average of 110 key support crude oil hey what about crude oil crude oil is trading right now uh, down just a little bit down 10 cents having gone right to the 200 period moving average and rebounded nicely I talked about this saying this could replicate a little bit what we might see in the Dow in the market itself well actually it's led the market down it's trying to bounce I'll talk about it as soon as we get back since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. All right, so we've got the, um, this is a crude oil, and it's just hit the 200 period moving average, and it's bouncing, but this is important. It has just hit the 14 period moving average in the weekly chart and bouncing. I'll tell you what I'm looking at here. I draw you this rectangle. Uh, did it move? Because it should have been like that. And we're a little under the rectangle. In the weekly chart, the daily one, I said, this is going to be very important because if it makes a little head and shoulders <clears throat> by having the right side try to bounce and then fail, then we're looking a little deeper than what I was anticipating because I had said 
my my thinking was that there could be a test of the 61, 50, maybe the even the 59s is actually we oops. 60, what did I say? I remember now. It was 61, oh, 62.50 to the 61s, but it went right through that this morning. It went down to uh, 50, no, it actually went to 60.04. And now it's bouncing as a 61.87. I don't think it's quite done yet. So it's saying to me, in this particular pattern, there's the arch formation, and that arch formation suggesting there was a test of the of the 200 period moving average. <clears throat> And now we're going to be looking at it closely because the weekly is saying the MACD is really good. Stochastic's taken a dive under 80%. The on-balance volume's down. Uh, this is just the first day of the, of the week. <clears throat> so I'm not going to get too carried away here. And then to say the technicals in the daily are very weak. There might be a bounce. My suspicion is it's going to have to do a lot more testing. Now, if we get to the TLT and we've got a question there, it's the usual statement. Uh, Paul, I was, I was actually going to ban Paul from mine. And then I thought, you know what? Um... I'll just keep it there. I'll keep it there because he's really, he seems, look, he says, your system is now showing holes. Love it. When you say other things can happen, you ain't kidding. Keep waving those pom-poms. He says every day, he says, waving those pom-poms. I have no idea what that means, number one. Number two is, uh, Paul, are you, are you wanting me to fail? Is that, I've been in the business a long time. So uh, you know, it's not, it doesn't show too much insight in your part if you think that I'm going to fail because there are always backups that, that we have. Um, that's number, one, number two. Number three is other things happen. That is the technique that I developed years and years ago. And if you don't, you can ask anyone that's ever used a Chapman Wave methodology. They know those Ds. Look at this D. If you want to know what other things can happen, at peak D at 126.69 on the 28th of, of March, the TLT, Lehman 20 T-Bond Fund, dropped to 122 in bonds, four and a half points. Big deal. The TBT, and let me explain to you what Ds mean, went to a trough D at uh, right here. After a peak D <clears throat> on the 1st of March at 36.64, it plummeted to 32 ran up to a peak D. Remember, I don't like peak Ds when they're underneath the previous one because it says, oops, it hasn't got much strength. It should have taken that out. It didn't, and it went to what? A peak D, the fourth highest peak in the Chapman Wave methodology, a methodology that's been used by thousands of people. And at 34.49, it makes a top and has pulled back to the most recent lows right now, trading at 33.20. So when I say other things can happen, that is the genesis of my methodology. So just that I clarify exactly what I mean by capital letters, other things can happen. You ain't kidding. All right, let's go back to the dollar because the dollar made a peak D at 98.33. Uh, on the 26th of February, that was a peak D at 98.33 the week of uh, February the 26th. And we are waiting for a peak D in the monthly chart because it's at leg C and it made a peak D at the high of 103.82 on, on January 2017. Just one little example of maybe 20 charts I've just shown you with those peak Ds, just to clarify. So I'll keep you there because you uh, it's good for, it's good for me because it keeps me on my toes and it lets me explain my methodology. So thank you very much. Next thing I had a question about the HGX HGX which is the uh, Philadelphia Housing Sector Index HGX here it comes look at this chart. This is a very interesting chart. Uh, it's gone to it actually recycled it went to a G. Actually, I'm, I'm going to say this is a G slash C. There's the alternate count because lower interest rates should be a boon to the housing market. It hasn't really been a boon, but it really has helped over the last, thank goodness, over the last couple of months. And it's in leg, <clears throat> I'm not sure that I can say this out loud, but I'll say it. it's in leg D in the weekly chart. So um, that's something to be monitoring. And so far, it's down $1.91. And that $1.91, look at the left side, holding the nine-period moving average above the 14-period moving average, which it tested today. And now it's sort of at the high of the day. 
um, better action, but the technicals are not that great. So I'm watching this one really closely. What was the question about it? Uh, HGX minus 0.7%, uh, BZH, BZH, oh, boy. oh, putting them together, thank you. BZH, there's that leg. <clears throat> I'm not sure I should mention the letter because it's just being used a little over, over an abundance of the, the letter. Oh, why? Look, it's at a leg D in the weekly chart and pulling back very sharply down 71 cents at 11.80. So this went C, D, E, F, G, I believe. C, D, E, F, and there's a G top. So yeah, Beza Homes pulling back quite a bit from the high that was made at about 40 in the 1440s, trading right now at 11.80. That's not such a great sign. Um, next question, I had XRT. Oh, good. I want to look at that. I completely forgot about it today. Uh, XRT went to a peak E. So this is a D, and now it's an E. And it's still holding pretty nicely. This is the XRT, but it's in the lower range. And to me, it's saying that the retail sector is kind of under pressure right now, but it isn't breaking down, it isn't breaking out. So treat it as a sideways move. If the XRT at 45, 42 over the next three weeks is able to close even one week above 46.50, that'll be a really big positive. If it closes underneath 44 any week, that's not, not a good sign at all. So that would be 46. So it's only a point and a little bit up, but I would even say on the downside, if it closes underneath the low that was made three days ago of 44.85, that's going to be a good sign to say the 200 period moving average of 44 could be retested again. That is the XRT, the retail, S&P retail uh, spider. And the next question I had was, oh, FXI. Oh, 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 oh. I, look, I meant to look at it last night and I didn't. Big, big, big gap down, down $1.41 at 43.50. Um, that made a peak e in the weekly chart. It did that beautiful left side, right side price time match and then extended just a little longer and then it failed. And I'm looking at this askance saying, well, it's actually held extremely well under the pressure. But let's see if it can if it breaks at 43.50 at any day if it closes under 40 under 43 it goes immediately to the 41.60 I shouldn't say immediately the chart says it should try for the 41.65 200 period moving average in May that's what I'm looking at BRK question the Dan BRKB uh, Berkshire Hathaway very nice rally up until let me just see I haven't notated this for a little bit we'll do it live right here. Let's see what it goes to. We've got we've got a break coming. A peak D in the weekly and the daily chart on the 4th of February at 207, 209.40, and then pulls back. I'll do my work, and by the time we get back, we'll have the notation in the chat for wave methodology straight after this break. Dow's down 230. Hi, folks. This is Tom O'Brien. If you'd like to be the bank, and get the type of interest they receive. Instead of the low interest rates they give to clients, then I have an investment you may want to take a look at. I'm offering four-year secured first mortgages on billable city lots in St. Petersburg, Florida. Ten years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from 30000 to 75000 the interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in a Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. It's amazing to think that Tom O'Brien started his weekly gold report 17 years ago with the first issue published April 7th, 2002, when gold was trading at under $300 per ounce. Gold peaked at more than $1,900 in 2011, and after spending many years consolidating at lower prices, gold may be poised for its next big run. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, South African rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. As of April 1st of this year, the gold report currently 
currently has eight active positions with an average unrealized profit of almost 8% for each open trade. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your Gold Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't let gold's next big run pass you by. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. So let me just do this. Uh, I've got the E Mini right now. I've got peak A, peak B, peak C, and a peak D right there. Let's see if that holds or if it pulls back a little bit on the two minute chart. Made a peak D in the 10 minute chart. And you've got a peak E in the five minute chart. So that was the pullback that we had. It's going to be interesting to see how much this holds, what happens after that. And as far as I can tell, uh, we haven't, I said that at the time at about 11, what is it, 10, I said we might be making some kind of intraday high. How the market handles that is going to be very important. If it takes that out, I'd say to subscribers, if the Dow is down more than 280 points at 130, that means we're probably going to close lousy. And if it's over there, if, if it's, let's see if it's down more than that, if it's down less than that, that's pretty good action, but uh, we'll see. And that was that was my contention, and uh, <clears throat> so Berkshire Hathaway peak F uh, today. If there's no new recovery high, which uh, it's impossible for that to happen by the end of the day, unless someone wants to take over Berkshire Hathaway, which will never happen. At 219.16, the high we're trading at uh, 212 right now. Now, that says to me that I can consider this probably a peak F for now. I don't see why not. The MACD turned down stochastics under 80%, and the weekly chart is making a peak C if there's no new recovery high all of this week. I have a target of 227.04, which I believe 227? 220, no, wait, that can't, can't be right. It should have been a 5. 220, should have been a 4. 224, I knew that was wrong. There you are, 224. So I have a target of the 224s. Uh, sometime, I, I would, I've got it really on a technical basis. Sometime by in June, maybe mid to late June, and uh, we'll see what happens. Because if it takes out 208 support over the next week or two, that's going to be really tough to achieve. Uh, but in the meantime, I, we don't actually have a position for subscribers in, in Berkshire Hathaway. This is one of those things years and years ago, you should have just bought and held and then gone to the meetings. And that's what you had to do because it's had a big choppy move for the last few years, but certainly making high highs and higher lows. So let's go on. We've got um, XLF. The question was, XLF, is this acting well today? Yes, it's acting well today, but it has pulled back from a peak E top four days ago. And it's a peak C if there's no new recovery high this week. I happen to like the financials. I know they get a lot of bad press. I, I'm just thinking that the financials for me are, are kind of doing the job. They're having higher highs and higher lows. Uh, they kind of being just the people who love them have always loved them. So that doesn't make any difference. But the people who have always wanted to put them down just constantly say that this is not the area to be. But I'm just only, I'm looking only technically. I don't know. I've, I've seen this before where you talk about rates um, very 
the low should be great for, for the XLF, then you'd hear rates, are, higher rates are really great for the XLF. You know what? The XLF, I think, is now a value trade, and I'm only looking at it that based on the technicals and on my sparse knowledge of the whole banking sector. I think that this is really, right now, more, a fun, more, more looking at it as a, a go-to area for safety, which I think is going to turn out to be one of the leading sectors, but not yet. And it's just holding very well. So XLF just down 26 cents to 27.81. I shouldn't say just because it's down 0.93%. And Dow's down 0.84 and the s and down 0.95. So it isn't just, it is down that. But I like it. And um, so back in... Uh, to, uh, September of last year, it hit 29.07, plummeted to 20, 2205. That's five points. That's 20%. And then what happens is it rallies very sharply, and then it stalls. So it stalled here in the 28-ish area, trading at 27.82. <clears throat> I like it. And we have a bank stock that's still doing very nicely. I like it very much. So here we are, and I'm holding the wrong mouse. That's why it's not moving. Um, I, IYT, which is the transports, this is a big tell. It's a nice green candle today with inner range between 191 support and 200, uh, most recent high on the 24th of April. I like it very much. We're still long this. Uh, we were long since the 186s. I, I'm expecting a leg D at some point in the next couple of weeks, and that will be above 200.42. It might have to have a little bit of a, 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 a more of a digestive phase. It might even have to hit the 187, 200 period moving average. I don't know. I'm just looking at it and say, I like this action. I like when the Dow and the Dow Industrials and the Dow Transports move in sync to the upside rather than when they move in sync to the downside. This has got nothing to do with Dow theory. It's just to do with directional moves, saying if, a moving, if it's moving up, it's a good sign. Next question I had was, oh, where did it go to? Oh, over the weekend. Oh, Oxy. I had a whole thing. And I meant to uh, check it out to, to read to you. Oh, I hope I can find it. Uh, maybe in the break I'll be able to find it, but I do believe it was all about Oxy. And what did it say? Oxy, Oxy, Oxy. Um, oh, I won't be able to find it in this very short period. I'll, I'll look for it during the break. It was from George, just to clarify what he was saying the other day. And then Oxy came out with a bumped up offer. So um, I'll find it. I'll get it in a moment. So let's look at the other thing that I want to, wanted to talk about, which was the VIX index. You see the VIX trading right now. At 16.43, had a high of 18.80. Now it's only only at 16.43. I just have to tell you that if the VIX starts to remain on a closing basis in the 16s or above 15.95, I'd be quite impressed, especially if there's another week session tomorrow. That would confirm for me that we're in this digestive phase, which I've been talking about for about a week or so. And that would be confirmed for me that it's probably the case. I'm calling it a digestive phase because I don't think it's a major sell signal yet, even though I've got a sell mode in the Dow, I've got a sell mode in the S&P. Uh, the QQQ is only in a sell signal. I have to wait for the end of the day to have confirmation. I'm pretty sure that it's going to be in a sell mode. Um, hmm. Yeah, if it closes under 188.60, Mm, yeah, if it does that, I think I'm going to call it a sell mode, uh, and, you know, and we'll deal with it that way. Hey, look at the New York Stock Exchange, NYA.X. So New York Stock Exchange, also potential peak C in the weekly chart, peak D. <clears throat> uh, where is it, Paul? Uh, peak D, two peak Ds in a row in the uh, methodology, the Chapman Wave methodology in New York Stock Exchange, but it did have a really good session on Friday. Today, it's pulling back. But it's actually starting to hold a little bit better. And that broad 2,000 or more stock, New York Stock Exchange, I don't want to see it at 12,921 down 115. I don't want to see it close on a weekly basis under 12,700 because that's going to say, oh, oh, it's really been struggling. It hasn't gone to the all time high of 13,635. <laughs> it's going to take even longer. So I'm watching this one closely. I had a question over the weekend. I must remember what it was. Uh, oh, SMHs. And the SMHs <clears throat> trading right now at 114.50, down three points. 
uh, it was it made a high all-time high at 120.71 on the 24th it made the pattern that we call the dreaded h pattern it today it went below the 113.49 low <clears throat> of six sessions ago but it's closed so far it's up quite nicely above that watching this one closely because the MACD and stochastic are very poor but it is a peak C in the weekly chart so I'm expecting more of a pullback to come I'll be right back Dow's down 220 I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powered by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. This is Steve Rhodes. Stay tuned for another great hour of the Trader's Edge, heard here at TFNN.com. So we're looking at Oxy at 58.62. And George has said, good morning. This is back uh, <coughs> Tuesday. Uh, good morning, Basil. Hoping all is well. Just an update. I started a new long position in Oxy at 58.03 for reasons as follows. One, Oxy off a 52-week high of uh, 87.67. Uh, back in June uh, of uh, 2018. Number two, has largest average in Permian Basin. I think I read all this on uh, Friday, but he wanted to confirm. Uh, did I get that confirmation? Uh, there was something else he added. Ooh, uh, yeah, I think he added something. But in the meantime, I did some work on Oxy over the weekend. The, the weekly chart made a, an arch formation. Remember the low case H, the dreaded H? Well, the low that was made back on... The week of the 28th of December, of uh, 56.83, the low so far has been 56.95 and 56.94 this week so far. So it's held that low. That's really important. And it's important for the, the week, weekly and monthly in this H pattern because there's even a larger H pattern that's gone from the 50, uh, 56s all the way to the 86s uh, and come back all the way down and retest of the lows. This is the third time we're back there. Okay. Now, on the daily basis, what I'm looking at is 
uh, we went to an arch formation in the daily chart, took out decisively and made a whole series of arch formations. Now we've got this little double bottom that's made 56.95 on the second and 56 point 94 today but it's running nicely it's up 64 cents at 58.59 george i think you've done your fund fundamental homework very nicely this is my thinking i'm not a fundamentalist but from what you've read i kind of concur with much of what you said the only thing i'm going to say to you is that this had better be there's still to be you know how it is in the in this business when there's a takeover it looks great in the beginning and then all of a sudden all those costs come into the into into a factor so it isn't always accretive or sometimes it is accretive but it takes about a year to be accretive i think that there's a chance that if oxy closes under 55 you got to be prepared for a little bit more of a hiatus but if it moves even higher if it goes to 60 in the next week and a half without taking out today's low that's really good action. Folks, stay tuned. You've got Steve, uh, you got Steve, Dave, and Tom coming up. Check out my opening call and my uh, daily newsletter. I think you'll find it uh, very useful. I hope so. And profitable.